Um, you already know that I'm Mary Snap, and you already know that I grew up in a little town in Kansas. What you don't know is that I still really love rural America. I really love the smell of rain right after, uh, and the earth right after the smell of rain. I really love stars in the night sky. And I love the sense of community that is rural America. But that didn't stop me at age 21 from getting out of Dodge as fast as I could and going to work for a technology company, an automotive company, in Detroit, talking about technology in the first stage of my career. And so today, decades later, I want to talk to you again about technology. In the mid-18th century, the steam engine revolutionized the way people worked and it enabled factories and production to begin. A little bit later, around 1825, it was the steam locomotive that really made a difference in rural America. It enabled people to travel more easily, faster than a horse for the first time, and it also enabled goods and services to be transported between rural America and the more urban centers. A little bit later, this piece of technology also really revolutionized rural America, the sewing machine. Because rural women had to spin and weave and sew, sometimes spending almost their entire day making clothes for the entire family. When the sewing machine came along, it enabled women to contribute to farm life in other ways and eventually really enabled them to get jobs outside of the farm. And then, at the start of the Depression, only one in 10 Americans, rural Americans had access to electricity. Five years later, President Franklin Roosevelt started the Rural Electrification Administration in order to build power plants to bring electricity to rural America. But the real pioneer was this woman, Louise Ann Mamer. She was hired by the REA to travel around the country and talk to rural women about the benefits of electricity. That sewing machine became electric, as did refrigerators, as did ovens, as did laundry machines. And rural women said, it's fine for us. And 20 years later, rural Americans had electricity at the same counter, as the same as their rural, sorry, it's the same as their urban counterparts. And then in the 1960s, of course, came the age of computers. At first, it was, it was big government, it was big business, and these rather sour men were the ones who were running the computers. But that changed. And within about 10 years, we saw computers on virtually every desk and in every home, in small businesses, and among, in kids, and in education as well. But the real jump start the real jump start was the internet. The internet is like electricity was 50 or 60 years earlier. Without it, rural Americans risked being left behind in terms of education, in terms of jobs, and in terms of health care. So it was really important to think about how we could close the gap. Microsoft's Airband commitment about five years ago began to raise awareness of the lack of broadband, and we also put some funding in to create more broadband across rural America. And we've made some great progress, and just recently the Department of Commerce has announced $42 billion of funding to finally close the gap. And it's important for all of us to be sure that we take advantage of all of those dollars. But today, we have a new frontier. And just like our forefathers before us who settled the American West, this frontier is a little uncertain, might come with some hard decisions. But at the end of the day, we know that there will be more opportunities and more resources. So let's talk about artificial intelligence. Let's dive right in. What is AI? Well, at a very, very simple level, I think about it as when I first learned to dive into a swimming pool. I was really bad at it at first. There were a couple of belly flops. There were even two black eyes when that one and a half didn't go quite all the way around like it was supposed to do. But every time I did it, I learned more, I got a little bit better until I could dive into the pool. And that's what artificial intelligence does for computers. It helps to make sense of a lot of data 
to simplify it in a world that is complex and in a world that's very layered. You all probably use artificial intelligence right now. When you ask your phone to give you an answer to a query, when you ask your car to give you directions, you're using artificial intelligence. But there are many more bigger, broader uses as well. Nearly 300 million people have low or no vision. And many of them use this Seeing Eye AI app, which helps blind and low vision people see the world around them. It helps to navigate pictures, it helps navigate text, and it helps to navigate even faces. And here locally, the American Crystal Sugar Company partnered with Microsoft TechSpark to use artificial intelligence to do some moisture sensing and some temperature sen sensing to be sure that that 10 million tons of sugar beets didn't spoil. But before they did that, workers climbed the piles outdoors and used their sense of smell, which computers don't have, to be sure that it was installed correctly. But now we're talking about a new level of artificial intelligence. Just like the internet brought to the computer, we're now talking about generative AI. And generative AI, you've probably been reading over the last six months, is the ability of a computer using ChatGPT or the new Bing, just saying the new Bing, to enable you to get answers back in essay form, complete sentences with sources that you then tailor to what you need. So let's take a look at how this works. This farmer in Kansas noticed a little bug underneath one of those leaves that he thought might threaten his harvest. He basically went to the new Bing, fired it up, asked a question about an integrated plan for soybean cyst nematodes. You didn't know, SCNs. Here's what Bing returned. Bing says, first of all, make sure that you really are talking about these particular pests. And then understand that you can rotate your crops so that you could get rid of the, you know, the non-host. You might try some more resistant varieties. And it's really good to practice good agronomy. And you can see that you have beneath that the sites to the material. So, I asked my nephew, Jake, who's an agronomist in Halstead, Kansas, what he thought about this. And he said, well, it's largely accurate, but I feel utterly and lowly humanoid. And I said to him, Jake, I know it's a bad day, but, you know, nobody but you knows if that farmer's knee is still sore, or whether the kids kept him up all night crying, or what exactly happened in the corner of his field a couple of months ago. Generative AI is only a tool to help enhance humans. Now, I have to break here. Jake is single. I'm just saying. <laughs> really, you know, it's part of my job. Part of my job. OK. All right. All right. Um, now, you know, you could be a teacher using AI to plan your lessons or to write your monthly newsletter so that you can spend more time with those 35 kids in your first grade class. You could be a coffee shop owner who uses AI to help track her expenses and revenues so that she can pay more attention to the menu for that 70th birthday party coming in the next day. But as Brad said a little bit earlier, we have to be clear-eyed about the technology. It can be used as a tool, or it can be used as a weapon to do harm. And it's really important that humans stay in the middle to ensure that it is being used in responsible ways. At Microsoft, we've been talking about responsible AI for the last five or six years. We're putting controls that are technical, contractual, and with compliance and monitoring and human decision making for sensitive uses. But let's be clear, we cannot do it alone. This will take you, it will take government, it will take public sector, it will take academics and business all working together to find the right balance for issues related to AI, and in some cases, apply some safety breaks. So the future is upon us. And we are all pioneers at the beginning of this next stage of artificial intelligence. And in fact, what rural America does best is pioneer new things, new technology. So I hope you'll join us, be part 
of the future with us. Thank you.